Hey guys, John Engel here, and today I've got a little treat for you, something a little different and something not from my collection. We're going to take a look at the Lotus of Aura. Now, this one is absolutely beautiful, and you're going to want to see some of the neat features of this car. Stay tuned. Hey guys, John Engel here, and I've got some great news. Today we're going to fix that by installing a brand new double dune. So today, we're going to do a oil change and replace those. So let's get started. We have a 2014 Lotus Evora S, which is so much better because it, the S stands for supercharger. And Mo Power is Mo Power, baby! I stole that from another channel, don't worry. 345 horsepower in this one. The base model had 280, so it's a huge jump. Now that is completely stock. This car does have an intake and also exhaust on it. Sounds completely different, so much better. I like that louder, visceral sound of a car. So we're gonna definitely get some cold starts of this one today. I would show you some of the neat little features about this car because hey how often do you get to play with a Lotus so let's take a look at what makes this thing unique so sitting in the interior of the Evora is much different than I thought it was going to be. I've been in a, a Lotus Elise before and it was very cramped and very small, very sparse. Obviously you don't get all the leather that this one has in it. And this is actually really amazing to me. I at first thought that the radio was an aftermarket one. No, that is actually stock. It came with a Pioneer double den head unit. I absolutely love the interior of it. It makes me feel like I'm sitting in Knight Rider. It's kind of a retro look. We've got the red on the sides. It's not like today where it's a full LED display and that you can just change things. It doesn't have that type functionality of it, but it's amazing how well they did it for the time and how it still makes me feel good. It is still a sparse interior. I will tell you, there's not a whole lot to do, which is great because it's a driving experience. This should be about you having fun in the car and driving it. The Elise was the go-kart. This one was more about the drive. This one does it so well. I'm truly amazed at how much I'm enjoying this car. All right, as you can tell, we've got her opened up. And the funny thing is, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot in the front, but you can fit camera equipment in here. And by camera equipment, I mean one GoPro and a microfiber towel. This is no use at all. In fact, I believe that when they were engineering this, they said, hey, how can we put a front truck on here that's not useful at all? This might be the way. You can check your brake fluid though, so that is important. Now let's go back and check out the engine. Now in the engine bay, you can see that you've got actually quite a bit of room back here. You can also put some stuff back here for an overnight bag. So you're probably not going to be taking this on long drives. And if you do, you're going to have to FedEx your clothes to yourself. You can take an overnight bag and your essentials, which would be good when you get there. Now the engine is actually built by Toyota, which is crazy to me, but as I've been looking around this car, I've been finding out that a lot of parts were outsourced from other companies, which would definitely help Lotus be able to keep that price point where it is. Now you can see that the engine is definitely going to be reliable, it's supercharged, and you could take it to a Toyota dealer if you ever have any maintenance needs. On the inside, these stocks that you guys see, these are actually from Ford. So we've got parts from every manufacturer that you can imagine. It's a Lotus brand with a Toyota engine and Ford parts on the inside. Who knows where everything else came from? We do have the Pioneer stereo, but when you put this all together, that's when it makes the difference and Lotus did a great job on that. So for more information on that, let's take her out for a drive. So after a little seat time in this, I can tell you, it is a huge upgrade from the Elise. So the Elise definitely feels more track inspired. However, I will tell you the power that this has and the, the way you feel in it, 
I would definitely go with the Avora if you're looking for something that you're going to drive more than an Elise. The Elise probably is still going to be more for time attack or doing autocross. This one's going to be more if you want to drive the car going out to eat, you want to drive it and have a little fun on the interstate. The power in this comes on so linear, the steering is so tight on it that you still have a lot of those qualities that were in the Elise. Just in a grown up more, I want to drive my car every day type feel and not feel that I'm driving a track car. It does that in spades. One of my only gripes about the car is the shifter. It feels like you're rowing a paddle. That is the longest shifter I've ever used in my life. I have been told that the newer models have improved on it and each model improves on it, but that would be one of the first things that I would be looking at if I was going to get one of these is, is there a short shifter option available and how quickly can I get that installed? One of my favorite things about this Lotus is the exhaust. Now I know that it's not factory, but it is a straight pipe exhaust and it makes this car feel alive. Before it was quiet and it was fine, but now... I, I, I don't even have words. It sounds amazing. And to get that out of a six cylinder is no small feat. So this really does that well. I know we've talked about a few things and I've talked about how it makes you feel like you're in the Knight Rider car. It does that very well, but I will tell you the steering on this is my favorite. I like a car that's responsive. As I turn a little, it does exactly what I want it to. I don't feel that there's any play in the steering wheel. I don't feel like it's disconnected from me. This car has that feel that if I point it left, it's gonna go left. If I'm keeping it straight, it does a very good job of that. Steering on a car is one of my favorite things. I've I've talked about it on the Viper and also on the Cobra R. This one's right there in that same class. Okay guys, I can't thank Drake enough for letting us take out the Lotus. It's always been a car that I've been uh, interested in and wanted to find out more. I've driven the Elise and now the Avora has taken it to the next step. I really enjoyed this car. Anyway, if you like this, make sure that you hit the like button, subscribe, leave me some comments, and we'll get back to you next time.